Hello and welcome to this episode of Convenience Talks and I'm thrilled to have Tom Gittins who is MD of Convex with me today for this session. Welcome Tom. Oh, thank you Katie, thank you very much for having me and hello to the audience. Okay. Um, I'm really pleased to be on um, this Convenience Talks, it's, uh, it's a great um, advertisement and uh, information is always uh, forthcoming on these so yeah pleased to be involved. Ah, thanks very much, Tom. And listen, I'm sure that most people will know exactly who you and Convex are, but do you want to just give us a little whistle stop tour for anyone that, that needs to know? Yeah, so um, Convex is a national buying group of wholesalers. We have 217 wholesale members uh, throughout the UK, including Northern Ireland and uh, the Channel Islands and the Shetland Isles. Um, we work uh, at head office. Um, we have a head office team of 13 and we work with over 200 suppliers um, and um, working and making sure that we can maximize um, all of the sales uh, and marketing uh, between our members and suppliers. And we've been going 49 years as well. Wow, well I hope that there's a 50th party in the offing for next year then. Um, Tom, talk to me about, you know, obviously the world of wholesale has been, well, rocked by the, the COVID pandemic. Talk to me about what it's meant for you as a business and, and, and for the industry overall. Well, I'd count ourselves as a group. There are seven buying groups in the UK. I'd count, because we're the most diverse and we, um, we trade in all product categories and all type of wholesale, retail and food service. So I would count ourselves as a group quite lucky in that um, our diversity has, um, has seen us through as it were. Um, but, but, but for those members um, that uh, over-index on food service, obviously overnight, about a year ago, uh, March onwards, they lost 95% of their customers overnight. Um, in terms of the, um, the Convex member that are dealing in the retail side, whether they're a cash and carry, um, or they're selling to um, local shops and uh, retailers, um, they've had a great time. Um, we've, we've seen their sales increase, um, they've had other issues like getting hold of stock was a big issue because um, of the extra demand um, and they've had you know they've had issues but they've done well as businesses so um, quite a big uh, challenge for for Convex as a group uh, in the last year but what we've done is tried to diversify our members even more mm -hmm. uh, a conf typical Convex wholesaler um, is a local wholesaler and he would um, typically um, have a fleet of vans that he would be delivering in a 30 mile radius. So we like to think he's the local wholesaler of choice. So um, what we've done is really try and help our members to diversify into other um, areas to sell to different types of customers um, so that uh, they can keep their businesses going in terms of turnover during the pandemic, but also strengthen them in the medium term uh, and the longer term in case we have uh, issues like this in the economy again. So um, yeah, it's been, it's been interesting, but I think what it's done is it's enabled um, wholesalers to look at um, different avenues, not rest on their laurels, um, and really uh, push forward with those projects that were perhaps on the back burner and um, things like digital e-commerce, um, apps, all of that kind of stuff that that perhaps were, you know, while a wholesaler is really busy and doing well, he hasn't focused on, um, and it's given them some time um, to push forward and really develop their businesses. So I think Convex as a group is stronger than it was a year ago. Um, but having said that, it has been the trickiest uh, trading year in, a, in our history, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And it sounds to me as well like, Although I know um, that buying groups already give a lot of advice and recommendation and, and support to their customers, it sounds like you've almost had to become more involved in that side of things. That you've actually, you know, if you're actually guiding people as to how they can expand their customer base, you're almost, you know, you'll be you're becoming almost a teacher as as well as a supplier. It seems. Definitely. I think, um, you know, the sales and marketing arm of Convex was always very strong. Um, but our number one um, aim really for the members is to get them great deals and great terms with suppliers and, and brilliant promotions. But 
as we've gone along, I think that's accelerated the sales and marketing arm because small businesses, you know, don't have the budgets um, to go and get um, super duper e-commerce, um, amazing apps, um, digital, et cetera, et cetera. And that's something that the buying group over the last few years, not just us as a buying group, but all buying groups have really been able to help businesses develop and move forward um, because at center level, we can uh, implement digital strategies and um, sales strategies um, for our 200 wholesalers um, and uh, you know, at a cost that is applicable to all 200. So um, yeah, I would say that that side of Confex and what we do in, in terms of support and, and helping our members grow their businesses um, has, has accelerated in the last year um, and will in the future become uh, more and more critical, I think, because, you know, terms are terms, prices, prices. Um, we, we get the same terms and pricing as ever, any other buying group. Um, it is our job and we have buyers who uh, are there to negotiate the best uh, prices and deals, but there's only so far you can go. And what we find with the suppliers is that they're very willing um, to help our wholesalers develop themselves. Um, and kind of um, you know look at other markets that they can sell their products and brands to mm -hmm. um, and we've seen in the last year there are already some members of ours that were doing really well selling b2c um, and kind of you know having platforms on amazon um, etc um, but what we've really seen a massive um, demand for and thirst for from our wholesalers is how they can develop their b2c businesses and it would seem that the general public um, are really up for it as well because wholesalers are able to buy in bulk um, and perhaps work on smaller margins than, uh, than other avenues for consumers at the moment. So um, yeah, it's accelerated the B2C the last year and um, we've got big projects in the pipeline to make sure that as many Confex members as possible um, are able to trade with great e-commerce, really easy websites to buy from, um, and help them with the sales of it as well and uh, the search engine optimization. So yeah, it's exciting and it's definitely um, driven forward, I would say our plans that we were going to implement with members in the next five or 10 years, it's all happened in a year. Yeah, well, there are some silver linings and we are, we are finding them, but then we also find ourselves with a lot of current challenges. Talk to me about what support is needed for wholesale at the moment. Because I know this is a big topic. I've worked with other wholesalers on it. We've provided data and insight um, for, for the argument for, for, for additional support. Tell me, what do we need and, and why do we need it? Hmm. Well, uh, as you know, wholesalers um, have kept uh, their businesses open and running throughout the pandemic. But a lot of them, if they've lost a lot of their custom, uh, when you're especially a delivered wholesaler, um, then, you know, when you send your van out, the way to make it make money or cover itself even is lots of drops spanning all different types of businesses. Mm -hmm. So a lot of my food service wholesalers have lost massive chunks of their business, um, the kind of bread and butter, if you like, of their businesses. And without that, they are currently running operations that are losing money and hemorrhaging money in some cases. So um, it, it's been a a big shame that the government haven't um, recognized that the wholesaler um, and especially the local wholesaler are intrinsic to the UK food supply chain um, and we haven't had any to date specific wholesaler support in the UK um, well in England actually Scotland's had support directly for wholesalers Wales has had direct support but in England we haven't had any and it's all very well. Yes, I commend the government for furlough uh, schemes um, and uh, et cetera, but the rest of the hospitality supply chain, notwithstanding wholesale, has had business rates relief, um, had access to grants, and it has been helped through this. So those businesses will be there after the pandemic. But I fear that without some sector specific support in the next six weeks, Mm -hmm. we will lose um, uh, quite a chunk of the wholesale um, supply chain. And, and you could say, well, there are lots of businesses going to the wall. Fair enough. But some of the places that my wholesalers deliver to across England, um, 
are not viable for the nationals to go there. They only go there once or twice a week, whereas my guy's going there every day. Mm -hmm. um, we do need these businesses to survive. They're integral to the local community. And, um, you know, they just won't be there otherwise. So, um, yeah, we're reaching out to, to Rishi and to Boris. We just need uh, sector-specific support. We're in the form of business rates relief, which has already been afforded to the rest of the hospitality chain. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, thank you. And um, I, I, I won't be so bold as to say they might uh, be watching this interview, but, you know, anything that helps to get the, uh, the, the word out there. I want to finish um, talking about the future, Tom. What does the future look like for wholesale under what I can see as being the two main scenarios at the moment? One being, you know, the vaccine works and, you know, by sort of, you know, summer, autumn next year, COVID is, is no more and we can all look back at it and rub our eyes and think, was that, was that some awful dream? Or the second um, and one that bet I can't really bear to think about scenario is that it continues to be an issue over the coming years. What does the future look like for wholesale and convex if either of those scenarios comes to pass? Um, I think the fittest will survive um, in any pandemic if, um, if you do the right things as a business and you look ahead and you future proof yourselves, then those wholesalers will win and they'll become bigger inevitably after all of this because there'll be more of the pie available to them. Um, we, that's, that's a key role and we've talked about it earlier in this interview about Confex helping those businesses who wish to um, move with the times and diversify and move forward. And I, I'd like to say most of Confex wholesalers are, are such. Um, they're very resilient family owned businesses which have adapted many times before and we'll keep doing so. Um, but yeah, you have to adapt, you can't stand still. And that was the case before uh, the pandemic. Wholesale has been changing dramatically in the last 10 years. Um, and we've had new entrants come in, making it more competitive. That's fine. Uh, my guys are local wholesalers with a USP um, of, of being local, delivering local. Um, and it's all in line with the future trends in terms of green, in terms of food miles, in terms of local produce and provenance. We're all there and we've got all the boxes ticked. But wholesalers need to keep looking ahead, keep investing in their in future proofing their businesses. Um, and then, you know, another part pandemic, it'll be fine because, you know, we have learned from this um, and we will make sure that, that we can withstand um, future issues. So yeah, it's, it, it's it, everyone, it's, it's made everyone look at themselves very starkly. Um, and the positive of that is if you can take uh, the good bits of your business and dispose of the, the, the not so good bits, um, you'll end up with a really strong business for the future. Well, I think that's a perfect place to end, Tom. I think that, that that's, that's fantastic advice. And, I, and I, I think you're absolutely right. I mean, in the sort of 13 odd years that I've been working in wholesale, I, it had changed dramatically before COVID struck. Um, but certainly what we've seen happen in the last nine months has just been, you know, has been, has been mind blowing. And you're absolutely right that, that di diversifying your business, um, constantly changing and, and hopefully the businesses that, that, that deserve to will, will get through this. So thank you so much for your time, Tom. I really, really appreciate it. And I look forward to catching up with you at some point in real life um, when, when we're allowed to.